Hey kids, Mr. Murray here on Mr. Murray's Mathland, and today we're taking a look at determining relative extrema. That's the collective term for maxes and mins on a function. And uh, what we want to do first, uh, regardless of the function, is find its critical points, its critical values, critical numbers. Uh, so that would be where the derivative is equal to zero or undefined. So for this first function, f of x equals x squared minus 6x over x plus 2, uh, we will need the quotient rule to do this derivative. So maybe it's been a while since you've done one of these. You might be able to do it in your head. You might need to do a little organization off to the side. a is x squared minus 6x. a prime is 2x minus 6. b, the denominator, is x plus 2. b prime is 1. So our f prime of x is big fraction, the denominator x plus 2 squared, and up top it will be 2x minus 6 times x plus 2, the product of those inners, inner expressions, minus x squared minus 6x times 1. Just remember, you are subtracted that entire result, so you're going to have to distribute that negative. And so here we'll have a little uh, foil. Uh, it's 2x squared plus 4x minus 6x will give us minus 2x in the middle, minus 12. And then distributing that negative, minus x squared plus 6x. Combine your like terms. And we'll have x squared plus 4x minus 12 all over x plus 2 squared. OK, so we've got our derivative. Uh, and now we want to find the critical points by where does this equal 0 and where is it undefined? Now you'll notice that it's undefined when x is negative 2. And to be a critical point, that, that x value needs to be in the domain of the function. Now, this function is undefined at negative 2. So it's not truly a critical point because the function doesn't exist there. So it couldn't possibly be a relative uh, max or a min. However, in determining intervals of increasing and decreasing, it is an important spot where the function doesn't exist. It's a, it's a vertical asymptote, a VA. So it's still going to be an important point to consider. So we're going to set that equal to 0 to determine where the function's undefined, because at a vertical asymptote, that might be a change in if the function's increasing or decreasing. It's not going to be a relative extrema, but it's still important. And our set our numerator equal to 0. This will be where the f prime, the derivative, is equal to 0. And that will happen at. When we set this equal to 0, we're going to factor it to what, x plus 6, x minus 2. And see, so we have two critical points at negative 6 and positive 2. And the function is defined at those two values. So those two could potentially be a relative max or relative min or neither. But that's really what, what the next ste step is all about is how do we test if they are relative maxes, mins, neither, and determining those intervals of increasing and decreasing uh, for the function. So this is where we do this interval testing, where you make some sort of chart or number line. Uh, we call it a sign chart. And we're plugging values into f prime. Because I know it at these three values, f prime is 0 or undefined, which means that every other x value, f prime is either going to be positive or negative. So I should be able to tell if the function's increasing or decreasing based on that. So I'm going to put these on a, a number line in that order, though, of course, chronologically. It doesn't have to be drawn to scale or anything. I'm just breaking this up at negative 6, negative 2, and positive 2. OK, so I've got all these intervals, and I really just want to determine for these intervals, is f prime positive or negative? And I always like to 
add a top part to the chart or the number line for f just so we can sort of describe what's happening with f based on f prime's behavior so okay you can plug in any value as long as it's not one of these three so when i plug in something to the left of negative six say negative seven and i do f prime of negative seven and i plug that in will it be positive or negative that's all i really need to determine and so i know the denominator of the fraction is always going to be positive keep in mind i'm, I'm plugging it into here into f prime the denominator is always going to be positive which is helpful so now i just really need to know is the numerator going to be positive or negative and you can plug it into there if you want to square it in your head but you also can plug it into the factored form maybe I'll just write that in factored form so we kind of see it collectively it's x plus 6 x minus 2 all over that x plus 2 squared that's my f prime that makes it very easy to plug into because when I plug negative 7 into that x plus 6 quantity you're going to get a negative negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1 and negative 7 into that x minus 2 quantity is going to give you another negative and it's all divided by a, a positive number so po negative times negative is positive divided by positive is positive which means in this interval f must be increasing f must be going up now between negative 6 and negative 2 if I plug in say negative 3 and this I don't really have to show this this little work I'm more explaining it here on the video but if you plug in negative 3 you're gonna get positive in the denominator again and in the numerator you're going to get negative 3 plus 6 is positive negative 3 minus 2 is negative so you're gonna get negative divided by positive that's gonna be a negative which means in that interval f must be decreasing if its derivative is negative which tells me what I know at negative 6 negative 6 is a place where f prime changes from positive to negative that means this is a relative maximum uh, negative 2 to 2 what's happening in between there now negative 2 keep in mind we know this is the vertical asymptote. This isn't a point on the graph. It's not in the domain. But on the other side of negative 2, what's happening? If you plug in 0, 0 is probably the easiest thing to plug in to any of these. You're going to get a, a, a negative divided by a positive. That's going to be a negative, which means in this interval, it's also decreasing. On the other side of 2, if you plug in 3, for example, 3 you're going to get positive times positive divided by positive which is all a big positive so we actually have a relative minimum at 2 because f prime is changing from negative to positive indicating f is changing from decreasing to increasing so now we're just going to put all this together and, and kind of answer the question. The sign chart isn't your answer. It's just a way for you to organize your work and figure out your answer. So I know where my relative extrema are. I know where my intervals are. It's all kind of represented in that chart. Just up to me now to put it all together. So let's get those y values at those uh, extrema. So f of negative 6. So we got to plug that back into the original function and that's going to be negative 6 squared minus 6 times negative 6 right that was the function all over x plus 2 so all over negative 6 plus 2 and from that we're going to get 36 plus 36 we're going to get 72 over negative 4 which is going to be negative 18 so at negative 6 negative 18 we have a relative max. Now we have a relative min at x equals 2. Let's get the y coordinate. So 2 squared minus 6 times 2 over 2 plus 2. It's going to give us 4 minus 12 over 4. So that's negative 8 over 4. That's negative 2. So 2, negative 2. 
there's a relative minimum. And now just describe the intervals where it's increasing and decreasing. Uh, for increasing, it was from negative infinity to negative 6, but also from 2 to infinity. Where is it decreasing? That was where f prime was negative, those two intervals. And it's debatable if you just said negative 6 to 2 because it didn't change, it was decreasing, it was still decreasing. It, I think you'd still get credit on the AP exam. I like to break it up though to show I know that the function doesn't exist at negative 2. So it's not really part of the interval. And I, th I think that, you know, you might not get credit if you kind of blow past that. So always a good idea to include that in your sign charts anyway, because something might change at it. It might have gone from negative to positive, who knows. So that is from negative 6 to negative 2, and from negative 2 to 2. Okay, so here is all of our stuff here, all of our pertinent information for our answer. Always nice to make that clear. And if you really want, you could always check this out graphically, either on a graphing calculator or on Desmos. Let's see what we got here. Let's go to, uh, let's use Desmos. How about that? Okay. Desmos, x squared minus 6x over x plus 2. You can actually see right there, if we zoom in a little bit, there's the vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2. We can see we have these two. Look at that relative max there and that relative minimum on that other you know, high piece of the hyperbola there. Okay. Good stuff there, kids. Nice to confirm what we found and make sure we didn't make a silly negative or positive mistake or you know, distribution way back when. And we know we pulled it all off. So hopefully this uh, makes sense. And if you have any questions, just ask.